He goes straight back to throw. Looks over the middle. Got a lot of time. Now he looks to run. Now he's breaking to the left. He breaks it inside. The five to the four to the score. Did he, he score? Hit the pylon he with got the, ball. the pylon with the ball, and they will award him a touchdown. And I got to tell you, I didn't see that coming from Jake Rudock, but that scramble gets him in the end zone. Michigan quarterback Jake Rudock coming off a career day in the Wolverines weekend win over Rutgers. Kind enough to join us this morning on Big Ten Football and beyond. Jake, how would you describe the evolution of this offense from the day that you were named the starter until right now? I'd say it's changed in regards to, you know, just how the season's gone. Um, you know, obviously in, in fall camp we install so many plays. Uh, and each week you don't get to all of them in each week. You know, you have a, a block that you actually choose from. But uh, I think we've evolved in mostly, I think, player to coach relationship, understanding, uh, having that good communication, being able to talk, and have that two way street of saying, I like this player, I, you know, I don't feel comfortable with it, let's not use it. It seems, Jake, that offensively, some weeks it's been the run game and pounding the rock. Some ga games you guys have decided to air it out a bit more. Right now, how would you describe the identity of the Michigan offense? I think it's like most offenses, uh, most pro-style offenses, just trying to keep a balance, uh, run the ball well, that helps set up the pass, and you know sometimes when you can be successful through the air, it helps make the run game work a little bit better. So I think just trying to keep that balance, um, you know, keep defenses uh, uneasy. And one guy that keeps defenses off balance, Jabril Peppers, who's seen some spot work on offense. How much fun is it to watch that guy work out offensively, and what does he bring to your offense? It's impressive. I mean, he'll look at a play. He just knows what he has to do. He has a great feel for spaces and uh, spatial awareness and understanding how blocks are going to occur. And it's just, I don't know, it just makes my job a lot easier when you can get it to a playmaker like that. And, you know, he's just taking in. He's having a ton of fun, which obviously allows us all to have a lot of fun, too. Is the term athletic freak the right term when describing Jabril? It's one of the terms you could use, yeah. He uh, definitely is a freak. Um, it's just, it's really impressive what he can do, um, and I'm just really, really happy that he's on our side. Jake, your receiving core doesn't get a lot of plaudits. plaudits. Guys like J.U. Chess and Amara Darbo, when people talk about the Big Ten's great receivers, they don't seem to come to mind. How underrated do you think that receiving core is? Yeah, I think they're pretty underrated. I think uh, what the thing that people don't really see is a lot of people see statistics. They see, uh, you know, a lot of spread offenses that can get the guys, you know, 100 yards every game. But you have to also look at how well these guys are doing on run plays. That's something that a lot of people don't realize is how well they're blocking downfield, which really helps with explosive plays. And then also it makes it tough on DBs. They don't know if they're going to come up, block them, cut them, what they're going to do, or if they're going to try to run past them. So I think just through all aspects of the offensive game, they do, it, they do a great job. Jake, we obviously see you in Ann Arbor this year thanks to the NCAA's graduate transfer rule. That served a lot of guys very well. There have been some complaints about the fact that very few of those guys actually go on to get degrees in that graduate major that they pursue. What are your thoughts on that rule overall and whether you think it should be adjusted or is it fine as it is? I mean, for my case, I think it was a, it was a great thing. It allows you to graduate from a great institution like Iowa and then also come to an, a great institution like, like Michigan here um, and work on my graduate degree and work on a master's that could, you know, for me individually help me get to med school. It kind of boosts my resume in that regard. Um, you know, and obviously we're coming here uh, to play football and, and get a great education. And that's the thing that you can't just take one or the, over the other. You have to really find that balance. Now, you're talking about non-football future there, but I just heard your head coach, Jim Harbaugh, say that he sees the NFL potential and the style in you as a quarterback. Your reaction to those comments? Whenever you have a coach like Coach Harbaugh who can, who can say those things about you, it, it makes you feel really good. And at the same time, you understand through being with him how much work that, that has behind it. It's not just something that's that's given to you. It's not just something that he says it and it's magic fairy dust. It's, it's something that you have to go out there and keep trying to earn it every single day. And you know, if you're not doing that, he'll, he'll be sure to let you know that you need to keep working and try to evolve your game and get better. Now, there's not a lot of difference in the color palette between black and gold and maize and blue. So did you get all new gear or sometimes do you try to pass off the old stuff as it just being maybe uh, the off shade of maize and blue? No, you, you wear... Uh wear what you get you wear the uh the team the team gear that you no have. no i mean when you're outside of practice i mean when you're not wearing the team issued gear 
Yeah, I mean, no, for the most part, I keep a pretty low profile. I'm not wearing all the team gear all the time, to be honest. So, I mean, I guess you can, I guess you can't, but I'm kind of in between there, I guess. All right, so, so you're fairly new to this whole Michigan thing with it being your first year, but some of your teammates obviously took a lot of enjoyment for a couple of reasons in Michigan State's loss to Nebraska. Jake Butt going on Twitter saying now he's a huge Buckeye fan. Are you ready to root for Ohio State at this point in the season? I'm just trying to focus on what we have to do. Um, you know, whatever kind of happens, happens, and we don't have control over the, all those other games. So I think the most important thing is for us to – Control we can control, have great weeks of practice, um, and go out there on Saturday and hope to perform to the best that we can. And uh, hopefully everything else takes care of itself. See, Jake, I, I knew it. When Coach Harbaugh said he sees and hears NFL future in you, it's not just a play on the field. I, I think it's answers like that. That was professionally diplomatic, my friend. Thanks. I've had a, had a bunch of practice so far. <laughs> Michigan quarterback Jake Rudock. Jake, truly appreciate the time. Best of luck the rest of the year. No worries. Thank you.